Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. If this is your first time, let me give you a quick rundown on what we're all about. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we build fun and inexpensive focused Commander decks. A focused Commander deck is more attuned than a casual deck, but not quite to the level of a competitive or optimized deck. Today's episode is going to be a special one, though, where we exclude the cost of the Commander. With just a $25 budget, it's pretty much impossible to build around some Commanders unless we do so. Sometimes you get lucky and open up a Commander in a pack, or you could just trade for them if you really want to build around them. So our budget is still going to be $25, but again, that's $25 for just 99 cards because we're excluding the cost of that commander. And prices on this show are powered by our sponsor, TCG Player. Before we get started today, though, make sure you go check out our new classic pink playmat and Commander's Quarters t-shirts on thecommandersquarters.com. And thank you to everyone who's already purchased our merchandise. It really does help support the channel. Also, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and click that little bell notification icon so that you can stay up to date on the latest Commander's Quarters episodes. Today's commander is Nibmizzet Reborn. Nibmizzet is a 6-6 flying dragon avatar that costs Wooburg. It has, when it enters the battlefield, reveal the top 10 cards of your library. For each color pair, choose a card that's exactly those colors from among them. Put the chosen cards into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. This is a very unique and extremely valuable enter the battlefield effect. If we build our deck correctly, we can really turn Nibmizzet into a value engine. On top of that, a 6-6 flyer for 5 mana is a very good rate. Though it does have a pretty restrictive casting cost, so we'll have to make sure that we really fix our mana. So what's our strategy for this deck? Well, we're going to use our commander to dig for some important cards and to refuel our hand. Essentially, Nibmizzet Reborn only cares about multicolored cards that are two colors. So outside of a few artifacts that are going to help us fix our mana, every single spell in this deck is going to fit within those restrictions. That means we have a pretty high likelihood of hitting a decent amount of cards every single time Nibmizzet comes onto the battlefield. And we've got plenty of ways to abuse that trigger and to make sure that we get it multiple times. And then how do we win with this deck? We're going to overpower our opponents with a ton of impactful multicolored cards. This deck is able to put threat after threat onto the board and continue to reload. On top of that, we can really control our opponent's boards and just outvalue them throughout the game. As with all Commander's Quarters decks, I'm going to break this deck down into 10 different tactics that show you how the deck works and how you're going to win with it. So let's start off with tactic number one, we can fix it. First up, there's Renegade Map, which comes into play tapped, and we can tap and sacrifice it to search our library for base land and put into our hand. Traveler's Amulet and Wanderer's Twig do the same thing, but we have to just pay one and sacrifice them to do so. With so many multicolored spells in this deck, including our commander, it's crucial that we can fix our mana. So since we're a budget deck, we're going to bank on colorless ways to do so. So we're also going to be running Grave Upheaval and Treacherous Terrain, both of which have basic land cycling for two. Not only are these both cards that Niv can actually get for us, but we can also cast them later in the game too. Grave Up People gives us the best creature from any graveyard, and it gives it haste. And then Treacherous Terrain can be a fantastic finisher. It deals damage to each opponent equal to the number of lands they control. Next up, there's our Millery Sphere, which we can pay two and tap and sacrifice it to go get two basic lands and put them into our hand. Next up, we're going to be running all the Border Posts, which are fantastic in this deck. There's one for each allied color pairing, and they all function in the same way, so let's look at Wildfield Border Posts as an example. We can cast it for one green white, or we can pay one and return a basic land we control back to our hand rather than pay its mana cost. It enters the battlefield tapped, and it can tap for either green or white. These cards are a fantastic addition to the deck for a lot of reasons. If you have the colors to cast them, they can help ramp you, but if you don't, you can just pay one and return that basic land back to your hand to cast them instead. So they can actually help you fix your mana when you don't have those colors. On top of that, our commander can actually help us grab these since they are two colors. We're also going to be running Firemind Vessel, which enters the battlefield tapped and we can tap it to add two mana of different colors. This card is fantastic at helping us both ramp and fix our mana. Next up is Tome of the Guild Pack, which is a pretty expensive mana rock, but it's very effective in this stack. It costs five, it can tap for one mana of any color, but it also has, whenever you cast a multicolored spell, draw a card. As I mentioned before, nearly every single spell in this deck is multicolored, so the amount of value that we can get out of this card throughout the game is absurd. Now, all these cards are great, but they're not quite as good as the Golden Pig of this deck. The Golden Pig is going to be the number one card out of our 99, and the Golden Pig for this deck is Ursus Filter. Ursus Filter is an artifact that costs 4, and it says multicolored spells cost up to 2 less to cast. This card is an absolute bomb in this deck. It may not help us fix our mana or technically ramp us, but it helps reduce the cost of pretty much every single one of our spells by 2. The amount of mana that this can save us throughout the game is absolutely absurd. We have plenty of high-costed multicolored spells in this deck, and this easily allows us to cast multiple in a turn. On top of that, although it doesn't help us cast our commander the first time, it definitely helps with commander attacks later on. If this card isn't dealt with early, we can easily cast a ton of impactful spells and get way ahead of our opponents. This card can really give us a huge advantage and set us up to win, and that's why it's the golden pick of the deck. But after we fix our mana though and cast our commander, what do we do next? Let's go through some ways now to really take advantage of our commander's trigger in tactic number two, don't blink. First up there's turn to miss, which lets us blink our commander at instant speed. There are plenty of these types of effects in commander, but not many that are multicolored like this one. This is a fantastic way to not only protect our commander, but also to get its trigger again. A repeatable way to do this comes with Miss Metal Witch. By paying two a white and a blue, we can do the exact same thing. Although this is a decent investment, the payoff can be huge. And finally, we're going to be running Vanish into Memory, which says, Exile target creature, you draw cards equal to that creature's power. 
At the beginning of your next upkeep, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. If you do, discard cards equal to that creature's toughness. Not only does this give us card advantage from Niv Mizzet's trigger again, but it also gives us some more card selection. But blink effects aren't the only ways that we can abuse Niv's trigger. So let's go through another way in tactic number three, bounce back. First up, we're going to be running two of the guild charms with Orzhov Charm and Simic Charm. Orzhov Charm says, choose one, return target creature you control and all ores you control attached to it to their owner's hand. Or destroy target creature and you lose life equal to its toughness. Or return target creature with converted mana cost one or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. And then Simic Charm says, choose one, target creature gets plus three plus three until end of turn. Or permanence you control gain hexproof until end of turn. Or return target creature to its owner's hand. Both of these have multiple uses that we can really take advantage of. But perhaps the one that we're going to use the most is the one that bounces a creature. By returning Niv back to our hand and then recasting him, we can get that Enter the Battlefield trigger again. So we're also going to be running Angelic Shield, which is an enchantment that gives creatures we control plus zero plus one. But the important part about this is that we can actually sacrifice it to return target creature back to its owner's hand. This is a great card for us to leave out on the battlefield and then sacrifice it when we need to. Next up, we're going to be running Cavern Harpy, which is a fantastic repeatable bounce effect for us. When it comes into play, we return a blue or black creature back to our hand. And then we can pay one life to return Cavern Harpy back to our hand. So as long as we have this in our hand for essentially two mana and one life, we can always bounce Niv Mizzet. And then there's Garner the Blood Flame, which isn't technically a bounce effect, but it works in a similar way. It has flash, and when Garner the Blood Flame enters the battlefield, return to your hand all creature cards in your graveyard that were put there from anywhere this turn. On top of that, it says other creatures you control have haste. So this card is a fantastic way to help us recover from a board wipe by getting us back our creatures. And by giving our creatures haste, they can start swinging right when they come back into play. So we know that we can blink and bounce our commander to abuse its trigger, but there's still one more way to do it. Let's take a look at that way in tactic number four, it's like you're a mirror. First up, we're going to be running Repudiate Replicate, but mostly we're going to focus on Replicate for this deck. It says, create a token that's a copy of target creature you control. So if we have a powerful creature in play, we can use this to copy them, but we can also just use it to copy our commander. Even though that copy is going to die, we still get its Enter the Battlefield trigger. That's a fantastic amount of value for just 3 mana. So we're also going to be running another cloning effect with Spinning Image. Now, although this one does cost 6 mana, it does have Retrace so we can cast it multiple times. And another difference is that it lets us create a token that's a copy of any creature on the board. So we can use this to both get value out of our commander and also get a copy of the best creature on the board. Next up we have some creature clones with Evil Twin, Altered Ego, and Protein Raider. Evil Twin is pretty much a standard clone, but it can also kill the thing that it cloned if we need it to. And then Altered Ego can't be countered, and we can also make it enter the battlefield with plus one plus one counters on it. Protein Raider does cost one less, but it also requires that we attack with a creature for it to clone something. Again, these clone effects are very flexible in this stack. We can use them for value by getting a copy of our commander, or we can copy one of our creatures or our opponent's creatures too. But perhaps the best creature clone that we have is Progenitor Mimic. Essentially, it's a clone that has, at the beginning of your upkeep, if this creature isn't a token, create a token that's a copy of this creature. Although this has a decently high converted mana cost, its investment is well worth it if we can have it stay on the battlefield for just a few turns. Alright, so we've talked about abusing our commander's Enter the Battlefield trigger, but what cards are we hoping to get from that trigger? So let's go through some powerful multicolored creatures in tactic number 5, the Gold Standard. First up, we've got a couple of heavy hitters with Savageborn Hydra, Vulture Zombie, and Phantom Nishoba. Savageborn Hydra has double strike and enters the battlefield with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. On top of that, at sorcery speed, we can pay 1 in Gruul to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. So even if we can't dump a ton of mana into it right away, we can still make it huge later. But Vulture Zombie pretty much doesn't need our help to get huge. It starts off as a 3-3 with flying, but it says whenever a card is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, put a plus one plus one counter on Vulture Zombie. This takes into account whenever our opponents have permanents that are destroyed, when they are milled, or even when they cast spells. So if this can stay on the board for just a few turns, it's a huge evasive threat. And then Phantom Neshoba has Trample and enters the battlefield with seven plus one plus one counters on it. Whenever it deals damage, we gain that much life. And if damage would be dealt to it, we prevent that damage and remove a plus one plus one counter from it. This card can be very hard for our opponents to actually deal with in combat. It's going to gain us a ton of life and can be a big threat. And we can actually just get those counters back if we need to just by blinking it. Next up, we've got two creatures that can not only power up themselves, but also all of our other creatures. Adriana, Captain of the Guard, not only has melee, but she also gives all of our creatures melee too. Melee means that whenever this creature attacks, it gets plus one plus one until end of turn for each opponent you attacked with a creature this combat. So at the very least, all of our creatures are going to get pumped up by one, but it's going to be even more if we attack multiple opponents. And then there's Knight of New Alara, which can be even more impactful. It gives each other multicolored creature we control plus one plus one for each of its colors. Again, every single creature in this deck has two colors, so it gives them all plus two plus two. But what's probably even more impactful is that it gives our commander plus 5 plus 5, and that makes Nib Mizzet Reborn into an 11-11 flyer which is a 2 hit kill. But we've also got some cards that take advantage of the fact that Nib is a dragon. Dromoka the Eternal has, when every dragon you control attacks, bolster 2. Kologon the Storm's Fury has, when every dragon you control attacks, creatures you control get plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn. And Atarka World Render has, when every dragon you control attacks, it gains double strike until end of turn. This is another great way to make our commander into a 2 hit KO. And then we've got two dragons that can help us deal some of our opponent's cards too. Silumgar the Drifting Death has, when every dragon you control attacks, creatures defending player controls get minus one minus one until end of turn. In Ojitai Soul of Winter has, whenever a dragon you control attacks, tap target non-land permanent and opponent controls, that permanent doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. 
but we've got even more ways to deal with our opponent's creatures with Bassandra Battle Syrup and Gruel Rage Beast. Bassandra says players can't cast spells during combat and pay a red target creature attacks this turn of Fable. So not only can she protect us from our opponent's combat tricks, but she can also force our opponent's creatures to attack. This is a fantastic way to force our opponents into some bad attacks and to get rid of their blockers. And Gruel Rage Beast has, whenever it or another creature enters the battlefield under your control, that creature fights target creature and opponent controls. Most of our creatures are pretty big, so they're going to be able to take on a lot of our opponent's creatures. And with all the blinking, bouncing, and cloning effects, we can take out even more creatures. So getting some big creatures into play is great, but how do we make sure that we protect our position? Let's go through some ways now in tactic number 6, safety first. First up we've got Lockset and Hierarch, which has pay green and a white and sacrifice it to regenerate each creature we control. This is a fantastic creature to have on the battlefield to protect our board. But when some of our key pieces are destroyed, we have cards like Reborn Hope and Treasured Find. Reborn Hope says return target multicolored card from your graveyard to your hand. And Treasured Find says return target card from your graveyard to your hand, exile Treasured Find. But we're also running some tutor effects to get some even bigger threats. First, we're running Signal to Clans, which says search your library for three creature cards and reveal them. If you reveal three cards with different names, choose one of them at random and put that card into your hand. Shuffle the rest into your library. So essentially this lets us go get three of our best creatures and we get one of them at random. And then Bring to Light has Converge, we can search our library for a creature, instant, or sorcery card with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of colors of mana spent to cast Bring to Light, exile that card, then shuffle your library. You may cast this card without paying its mana cost. So essentially since we're in a five color deck, we can pretty much go get any creature, instant, or sorcery card with converted mana cost of five or less and just cast it. This is an extremely powerful effect that can really help us swing the game in our favor. And we're running plenty of other multicolored spells outside of creatures that are very powerful. So let's go through some of them now in tactic number seven, I love gold. First up there's Behemoth Sledge, which gives equipped creature plus two plus two lifelink and trample. So this can turn one of our powerful creatures into an even bigger threat and keep our life total high. Even by just equipping it to Niv makes him an even bigger force to be reckoned with. Next up there's Collective Blessing, which is a very powerful anthem. It gives all creatures we control plus three plus three. Just by having a few creatures in play and putting this down can really swing the game into our favor. And then there's Response Resurgence. Response is going to deal 5 damage to target attacking or blocking creature. But Resurgence is the more impactful side of this, it gives creatures we control first strike and vigilance until end of turn. And after this main phase there's additional combat phase, followed by additional main phase. This card essentially lets us swing out twice and protects us from a crack pack. Next up we've got two enchantments that can help us create a ton of tokens with Predatory Advantage and Necromancer's Covenant. Predatory Advantage says at the end of each opponent's turn, if that player didn't play a creature spell this turn, put a 2-2 green lizard creature token into play. Odds are, each of our opponents won't be casting creatures every single turn. So throughout the game this can create us a ton of tokens and make us a huge board. And then Necromancer's Covenant can make us a ton of tokens at once. When it enters the battlefield, we get to exile all cards from target player's graveyard, then put a 2-2 black zombie creature token onto the battlefield for each card exiled this way. And on top of that, these zombies are going to have lifelink too. The later on in the game, the more creatures that are going to be in our opponent's graveyards, and the more value we can get out of this. And even for just 4 or so creatures, this is going to be well worth the cost. But finally, there's perhaps the most impactful enchantment that we have with Profane Procession. For 3, a white and a black, we can exile target creature. Then if there are 3 or more cards exiled with Profane Procession, we transform it. It transforms into Tomb of the Dusk Rose, which we can tap to add 1 man of any color to our mana pool. And on top of that, we can pay two, a white, and a black, and tap it to put a creature card exiled with this permanent onto the battlefield under our control. So this card can both get rid of and give us some of our opponent's best creatures. But we've got some other ways to deal with our opponent's cards ahead of time, too. Let's go through some of those ways to do that in tactic number eight, Counter Strike. First up, there's Counter Squall, which is going to counter target non creature spell, and its controller loses two life. And then Hindering Light is going to counter target spell that targets us or a permanent we control, and we get to draw a card. Next up is Perplex, which is going to counter target spell unless its controller discards their hand. On top of that, we can transmute it for one blue black. This means that we can discard it to search our library for any card with a converted mana cost of three and put it directly into our hand. We've got a ton of great spells that have a converted mana cost of three, so this card can come in huge. And finally, there's Counterflux, which can't be countered by spells or abilities, and it's going to counter target spell that we don't control. We can also overload it if we need to for one blue blue red. But we also have ways to deal with our opponent's permanents if we don't get a chance to counter them. So let's go through some of those ways now in tactic number 9, Multi-Purpose. First up we're going to be running two more of the charms with Rakdos Charm and Golgari Charm. Rakdos Charm says choose one, exile all cards from target player's graveyard, destroy target artifact or each creature deals one damage to his controller. And then Golgari Charm says choose one, all creatures get minus one minus one until end of turn, destroy target enchantment or regenerate each creature you control. Every single one of these effects can come in really handy and can really help us in different situations. Another flexible card is Hull Breach which says choose one, destroy target artifact or destroy target enchantment or destroy target artifact and target enchantment. For just two mana this is a very powerful removal spell. Another powerful removal spell is D-Spark. It's an instant that says, exile target permanent with converted mana cost 4 or greater. Now targeted removal can be great, but we also want to make sure that we can deal with a lot of things at once. So let's go on to our final tactic, which is tactic number 10, Feel My Wrath. 
First up, there's Savage Swisser, which is going to deal X damage to each creature. This is a very flexible board wipe that we can use to actually keep a lot of our board alive. And then we're going to be running Fine Finality. Fine says, return up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. For just two mana, this can be a very powerful effect for this deck, but Finality can be even more impactful. It says you may put two plus one plus one counters on a creature you control, then all creatures get minus four minus four until end of turn. So again, this is a board wipe that's pretty much going to keep our board untouched and destroy a lot of our opponent's creatures. Next up, there's Last One Standing, which says, choose a creature at random, then destroy the rest. Although this can leave one of our opponent's creatures around, this is still a very effectively costed board wipe at just three mana. Next up, there's Time Wipe, which says, return a creature you control to its owner's hand and destroy all creatures. So not only can this bounce Niv back to our hand, but it can also clear the board for us. And finally, we're running Gaze of Granite, which is very impactful and flexible at the same time. It allows us to destroy each non-land permanent with converted mana cost of X or less. So again, this allows us to pick and choose what stays and what goes. This deck allows you to generate a lot of value with its commander and allows you to cast a ton of powerful cards. But now that we've gone through the cards that help us win with this deck, let's go through the cards that help make it happen. It's time to go on to the mana base. First up, we're going to be running Evolving Wilds and Terramorphic Expanse, both of which we can tap and sacrifice to search our library for basic land and put into play tapped. And then we've got Jun Panorama and Warp Landscape, both of which can tap for a colorless. We can pay one to tap and sacrifice Jun Panorama to search our library for either a swamp, mount, or forest and put it onto the battlefield tapped. And Warp Landscape allows us to pay two and sacrifice it to search our library for any basic land to put onto the battlefield tapped. Next up, we're going to be running the eight more budget friendly tricolored lands. And then we're running all five vivid lands. Each inch is the battlefield tapped with two charge counters on them. We can either tap them for one color or we can tap them for any color and remove a charge counter from them. And finally, we're running eight basic lands, five of those are going to be a forest, four will be an island, three will be plains, three swamps, and three mountains. And now that we've gone through every single card in this deck, let's do a quick price check. A quick reminder that our deck costs are calculated using TCG player optimization, optimizing with even heavily played and damaged cards because those cards need a home too. The average nib visit Reborn EDH rec deck is going to set you back $357.21, so let's see if we compare to that. Our deck is going to be much more affordable, coming in at just $24.97. And just a quick reminder that our deck cost actually doesn't include our commander because it is a commander excluded episode. Again, Commander's Quarters decks are built to be tuned and focused within their budget, but there are always ways that we can improve on them. So let's go through some reasonable upgrades that you can add into the deck and what I would take out for those cards too. Just a quick disclaimer before we get into this, these reasonable upgrades are going to be completely based off of my own perspective. When you're making choices on how to adjust your deck, you're taking your own playstyle and meta into account. So make sure that you factor that in when it comes to making your own decisions on what to swap in and what to swap out. Now that we're on the same page, let's go through how I personally would upgrade the deck. First up, there's Wayfarer's Bauble, which comes in at $1.95. It's an artifact that costs one, and we can pay two to tap and sacrifice it to search our library for basic land to put into play tapped. To put this in, we're going to take out Renegade Map. Wayfarer's Bauble is a fantastic card, and I'm very sad to see that it's not budget anymore. Unlike Renegade Map, it can both ramp and fix your mana. And then let's upgrade this deck by adding in Chromatic Lantern, which comes in at $5.85. It's an artifact that costs three, and it says land you control have tap, add one mana of any color. And then it also can tap to add one mana of any color. To put this in, we're going to take out Wanderer's Twig. Chromatic Lantern is a fantastic way to pretty much permanently fix our mana. The impact that this has is just much greater than that of Wanderer's Twig. Next up, we're going to be adding in Dax Duplicate, which comes in at $1.79. It's a 0 0 shapeshifter that costs 2 blue red. It's essentially a clone with haste and dethrone. To put this in, we're going to take out Protean Raider. Dax Duplicate may cost more, but we get more from it. And on top of that, it's more dependable since we don't have that raid clause. And then let's upgrade this deck by adding in Brago King Eternal, which comes in at $4.04. It's a 2 4 spirit with flying that costs 2 white blue. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, exile any number of target non-land permanents you control, then return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control. To put this in, we're going to take out Behemoth Sledge. Brago is a fantastic way to abuse our commander's trigger over and over again. On top of that, it pretty much gives our creatures vigilance. Behemoth Sledge can be very effective in certain situations, but it has nowhere near the impact that Brago has. Next up is Eladomri's Call, which comes in at $4.77. It's an instant for green-white, and it says, search your library for a creature card, reveal that card, and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. To put this in, we're going to take out Signal the Clans. Eladomri's Call is just strictly a better tutor, and there's no arguing that. Finally, let's add in Pernicious D, which comes in at $3.63. It's an enchantment that costs one black green. We can pay X and sacrifice it to destroy each artifact, creature, and enchantment with converted mana cost of X or less. To put this in, we're going to take out Savage Twister. Pernicious Deed is a fantastic board wipe that is very flexible and we can keep it on the battlefield to threaten our opponents. It's definitely an upgrade over Savage Twister, which only gets rid of creatures. And with that, this show is coming to a close, but I really just want to hear about what you guys think about this episode, so why don't you let me know in the comments below. When you're buying a deck or just individual cards, make sure to use our link in the description. Not only will you be getting great prices on TCG Player, but you're also going to be supporting this show because they sponsor us. And make sure that you follow us on social media so you can get some early hints on who the next commander just might be. Links to our social media accounts can be found in the description. Also in the description below is a link to the Commander's Quarters Patreon page, and I just want to say a quick thank you to the patrons who have subscribed so far. There are many benefits to being a patron for the Commander's Quarters, including being able to vote on future Commanders for deck techs. There's even a general level tier where you get your own personalized deck tech dedicated to you.
I truly couldn't do this without all of your support, so from the bottom of my heart, thank you. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. And while you're at it, check out some of our other episodes on budget deck techs, quest for quarters episodes, commander topics, and creators quarters. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again, and have a good one.